Hello, 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 everybody. It's your girl Ashley, the Amateur Expert, coming to you live today. Fifth Talk Tuesday, um, and I'm excited for you guys to hear um, Trevor's story. He's going to be on the show today. He is at Just Enough Designs, um, and he's going to be talking to you guys about his career path, his idea of success in the beginning when he first started out, um, and his idea of success today. So he is in the room, and we're going to get started. Hello, Trevor. How are you? Very good. Yourself? I'm good. Thank you. Uh, thank you for being on the show today. And if you could, please introduce yourself and tell the audience who you are and what you do currently for work. Of course. My name is uh, Trevor Alexander at uh, Just Enough Design, and I am a designer specifically for UI, websites, and graphics otherwise. Awesome. And actually, I think you are my first international uh, <laughs> Yeah, way, way up north, all the way in Canada. This is fantastic. Thank you. Uh, you've helped me reach a milestone. Very good. Oh. Yeah. Um, so, Trevor, what did you want to be when you were younger? Yeah, it's it funny with that one because I actually want to be a reporter because my, uh, my father was one, and I got to see him on the TV all the time, and I just thought that looked like such a cool career, get to report on things, like do stories and everything. So that was kind of the – the first one but that kind of gave way to being an animator so after that was art creativity and we'll do animation if i could oh wow that's pretty cool and the motivating factor behind um wanting to be an animator i know you said your father <clears throat> excuse me was influential influential on you wanting to be a reporter what would you want to be a animator i yeah, just like the creativity of it and i found i was um creating that type of art all the time and trying to make mm -hmm. those motions and then to you know you're watching a disney movie and you start to think wait i could do that for a living like that sounds amazing i just want, i'd love to draw and come up with cool stories so that kind of led into uh, that line of thinking that's pretty cool and what was your idea of success at that time so that time it was to be an animator at disney uh, specifically and there was a uh, the school i went to sheridan uh, up here in canada there was this thought that like Disney hires directly out of there if you got into the animation program. Oh, wow. So like the, the very direct path was, okay, I just have to go to Sheridan, uh, get accepted in the program, and then Disney will hire me as, a, <laughs> as an animator. That's pretty cool. Um, and so how did you transition from being an animator to um, being in design? Uh, well, I sucked at drawing. Uh, that was a bad, <laughs> that was a bad idea. That'll do so, it. <laughs> yeah, so le learned really quickly that, um, and I, I just didn't have the passion for it. I think I ended up going to college, uh, but so that, I did go to Sheridan, but it was just for art fundamentals, okay. so it's just like the basics of it. And you got to see what real artists look like, and it's not so much that they uh, want to be an artist; they are an artist, you know, it's almost like an affliction in some ways that they just can't stop drawing. So you see that type of obsession about it. And that's just something I didn't have. Okay. And so the, um, yeah, so that, that's definitely how that uh, change was just, I could tell that besides not being good at art and not getting into the programs, it uh, just didn't seem like it was going to be for me. <laughs> um, and what is your idea of success now? Yeah, so that was um, that was interesting because I had a my first mentor, one of my first jobs, uh, and he was unbelievably influential for me. He sat me down. Uh, he he liked taking on like young people with ambition, try to like give them guidance. And he said, "Let's uh, forget pie in the si sky stuff." As far as you know, it's like I want to own fifty million or something like that. He's like, "Walk. What's your perfect day?" Hmm. So when you when you wake up in the morning walk me through what the perfect day for you is. And so that's what it is. It took a while to really like nail that down, but it's like, you know, I want to wake up. Um, I want to walk my kids to school. You know, he, and, and at that point he started to kind of really drill into what that meant. He's like, okay, so you woke up, but what, where did you wake up in mm -hmm. a condo in New York city in a suburb? Like, what's that? So you had to think about, it. it's like, you know, I think I'd like my own house and maybe a backyard. So, and then, so he just kind of kept, drilling it. So it's me, I, I walk my kids to school, I come back, uh, maybe make breakfast for my wife, and then get into work. And I, I thought like, okay, I'll just arrive at work maybe 10 or 11. So 
a place where I want to be as opposed yeah. to I'm going to get in the car and rush there. Yeah. Then, you know, pick up the kids, be with them at night, maybe work a bit and study at nights and have a good time with the wife. So the, but he, he just kind of kept drilling into that stuff. He's like, well, for a house, it's going to cost about this. Mm. And for that type of job, you're probably going to need to know these things. So that's your path. Like get after it. So that instead of just, you know, arbitrary, like I'm going to, I'm going to be a millionaire. It's going to be right, like, right, right. He, here's the, here's the target you have to get to. So fortunately I was able to, he set me on that path and I was able to follow it pretty well. That's pretty awesome. Um, and can you explain sort of what it means? You said that you were working in design in um, different um, environments there, different segments of it. So what um, exactly do you do in design? Yeah. So th my main work was in website de design and application design. So if you have a iPhone, like it's designing applications for that, it's designing, you know, websites and applications online <clears throat> and specifically kind of the user experience and then the user interface for those things. So it's in a whole, in a whole someone says, I want to create a product where you can rent, uh, you know, scooters online. Mm -hmm. So you start to come at it from for, for a user, they arrive and they want to arrive a scooter. Like, how do we best serve them? So, okay, like, we, they probably want to do these things. Let's get that into the interface. And then that leads to this screen, and that leads to this screen. So you figure out that kind of user path as far as what, how can we bring the functionality of this application to the forefront? And then the second part of that is how do you make it aesthetically pre pleasing? How do you keep it on brand? And how do you make that stuff look great? So I think the core of it was really UI design for applications and websites, but then it definitely led into all the other stuff design as far as, you know, logos and uh, flyers and all the other kind of fun stuff that's able to make there too. Yeah. Um, and so what is something that you have learned or you're in the process of learning that you wish you learned earlier on in your career? Hmm. Yeah, that's a great one. I think um, tenacity and my problem is I think I was very fortunate in my career. And I think what I think is my greatest lesson I had an inkling on early, even if I've, I couldn't really put it into words. Mm. And I think it's that uh, kindness and um, being liked. Well, sorry, I don't want to say being liked. That's the wrong way to phrase <laughs> that one. It's okay. uh, being nice and being, um, being nice, being humble. There's a word I'm struggling to find that's bothering me. <laughs> being, um, being hardworking, being humble, and being nice, like paid huge dividends. Mm -hmm. Like if people like to work with you and that's not, and what I was trying to be afraid of or what I was afraid of saying is like, you have to try to be liked and that's right. the wrong message. What I'm saying is if people enjoy working with you, right. you do what you say, you say what you mean, you put others needs first, you become part of a team. Likeable, right. I think, right? You want to be likable. Yeah, likable, exactly. And so, someone would want, if I've worked with you, if someone worked with me before, they'd want to work with me again. Mm -hmm. That's what you strive for. Because what happens then is that if they know, if they like you, they like working with you, and you're fairly good at your craft, you'll beat out the top people every time. Because like be, being number one with an attitude will always lead to number five for who people like. For sure. Like time, because the, the top teams... Um, will not necessarily have the most talented people as opposed to people who are willing to work on that team. I yeah, found. There's a cohesiveness there for sure. Cause it's uh, yeah. Cause a, a bad person, despite all their talent is poison, you know? Mm -hmm. So you, you get rid of that and instead you find a team that works together cohesively. So I think it's that humility, kindness, uh, you know, giving others credit, like just working cohesively on a team and it takes care of your career in that sense, I think takes care of yourself. So that I, I guess I didn't necessarily, I had a fairly good inkling of that when I started, if I didn't quite, was if I wasn't quite able to put into words at that mm -hmm. time. That makes sense. Um, so what are some tips and motivators um, that you've learned and utilized um, along your career? Yeah, so the, um, so always, you know, always be learning. So never being satisfied with uh, kind of where you're at. Mm. Uh, not being afraid to go outside your discipline. Mm. I, I think people get really narrowly focused on I am a you know digital marketer I am a salesperson I am a designer and they forget they refuse to stray out uh, one of the some of the greatest uh, stuff that I've done for folks has actually been within project management 
Like I went for some project man management courses and I learned how to do that. And then when I started to work with teams, it's like, oh, you can also do some project management. Like, so you can not only design something great, but you can ensure mm -hmm. that the process, it actually gets developed and built, right? So that's fine. And same with like videographer, like podcasts, like recording. There's just no need to limit yourself into that exact field because ultimately I think that broad, that broad, what, um, broad amount of knowledge like comes back in and feeds into your career. You become kind of a more rounded person. I agree. And you're like a better asset to yourself and also to your team um, or employer. Or um, That's really good. Make sure you diversify um, yourself. Mm. Um, so um, you are an entrepreneur or, or yeah, have some the, entrepreneurial... Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I always... Would. I'm a hard worker and mm -hmm. where that like tenacious, like I really, I adore working and where that found footing the most was within startups. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the first, uh, I got fired from my first job as a designer and I was young. I didn't have anything else to do. So uh, a friend of mine had a startup or his friend, my friend's father had a startup in another city. Okay. And, you know, I called him up and I was like, you know what? Like it, I have nothing going on. I just got fired. If you put a roof over my head and feed me, I'll come work for free. Nice. And we did. So I, for a whole year, I lived in this founder's basement because the project was really cool. Like I liked it. We were building a, a GPS unit for a Nintendo DS. Oh, wow. Yeah. So you could just plug this thing in. It was a, a GPS system. It was really cool. Like I loved it. So it's, so I was up there. wasn't making a dime, but I was being fed. Got to go to work every day. I met that. I met the mentor. I was just meeting him at that job. Oh, okay. Yeah. So like the trajectory of my life, as far as taking that one mm -hmm. opportunity, right? Um, so then the, so that, that, that actually sold that, that company to BlackBerry, like back when BlackBerry mm -hmm. was actually good. <laughs> yeah, I used to love BlackBerry. But, yeah, I know. I, I miss them some days, but, um, but that kind of started a thing. And from there, it was kind of just being brought along to various startups. So um entrepreneurial uh, i've always had my own design business as i've gone through these various ones but i've also participated in a lot of uh, startups so that'd be certainly a way to say it <laughs> i like it um and so you are launching um a class right absolutely yeah so i'm about to launch a course called a website in a day or build a site in a day uh one thing that was a constant was building websites just throughout the entire career where, you know, the for clients or for whatever job I was doing, the ability mm -hmm. to stand up a website quickly and effectively was important. Yeah. And <laughs> the first, <laughs> the first website I ever sold was for a client is a really great client. And they called up and they said, Oh, can you build, you can build WordPress sites, right? I'm like, yeah, of course I can build <laughs> WordPress sites. He's like, okay, I'm going to send it over. We need this by like uh, the end of next week. It's like, Oh, great. No problem. Hangs up the phone and I run over <laughs> to the computer like, oh God, how do you build, how do do? <laughs> how do you build a website? <laughs> um, but, you know, piece by piece and like um, I figured out how to do it. So they, I found a tutorial that took a, a file, converted it into a website. I just followed along with the file he sent me. And by the end, it was really great. And I was happy. To, I was willing to make that claim because I knew I would, you know, I, would, I was not going to sleep and I was going to do medicine, right? Yeah, I, I was going to like die before that thing didn't get live. So I was willing to make that claim, but it went great. I got a lot of work from that. Um, so what came out of that though, and it's kind of been a thorough um, or the same thought through my career is when you build something while you're learning it, like when you're if you jump without a parachute and you're building that parachute on the way down, it's imperative that that parachute works and it's repeatable. Yes. Right. So, <laughs> so I found that when I approached building websites, much like when I approached design, cause I, I was self-taught ultimately with uh, the graphic design, but mm -hmm. when I approach building a website, it's from that perspective, someone who kind of doesn't know how to do it. So it's about the f most effective way, the easiest way and right. done in a way that's, you know, reliable, that's not going to leave you stranded and not be able to handle it. Cause I think some of the problems with, uh, people who really understand code when they're teaching is that in the back of their mind, they know they can fix it. Like they, right. <laughs> they have four parachutes that they can pull right, but right, right. for myself. I didn't have any. So like, so when I'm teaching how to do it, it's very much for the non-technical person to say that if you know nothing, 
Uh, this isn't just about getting by in the skin of your teeth. This is about learning an approach and a methodology that you'll be able to absolutely feel confident in building sites for yourself and other people. So that's very much the approach where it's, you know, we discussed some of the major builders like Squarespace, WordPress, Wix, uh, Elementary within WordPress, things like that. But okay. we also kind of approach it from a design perspective. Design you know, design's always near and dear to my heart. Yeah. And also from a, you know, why have a website? Where do you get to domain? Like what content should you have? And what's really the most effective and safe way to get a site live and maintain it? So if someone, when, when someone takes your course, do they have access to like speak with you one-on-one -on -one or are they receiving um, just sort of like a package and it's like, go for it. You got it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you can do it. I promise. Yeah. So I certainly promise it, but I never would want to just send anybody into the wild because um, I've been uh, coaching a few early students and even the, the stuff they come up with when you hear it uh, from people's mouths, you're like, oh, I should really make sure I build it up as well. So right now for the final course, what will happen is people will get access to the full video library that will then be updated. So, you know, when WordPress or Squarespace comes up with an update, I intend to add more content to it. So it'll be kind of an ongoing thing for someone. Um, there's going to be weekly sessions with myself. So, oh, pe so people can bring their questions uh, if they're experiencing something specific and we can all learn together. Plus like any new tips and tricks I learn, I can bring. But because I'm in pre-sale right now, uh, the official launch is about the mid of February. Okay. But right now, if somebody uh, joins in on the pre-sale, not only is it $80 cheaper, but they're actually going to get one-on-one -on -one coaching with me. That's amazing. So what you can imagine, it's kind of like as if you're paying for my time to build you a website because we'll be live video call, except you'll be doing it real time so that you're learning it, I'm guiding you, and then you get the full course afterwards. Secretly for myself, it's also just, well, not secretly because I'm about to say it, but <laughs> <laughs> the main, I just want to ensure that I've really covered the bases. So if somebody has something that I didn't cover, I didn't talk about, I want to make sure that then I include it in the final course too. So right. yeah, it's, good. it's kind of a good time to grab it because they... Um, there's some limited spots for the one-on-one -on -one coaching where they'll, uh, by the end of it, they will have a fully um, functional and beautiful looking website that they'll know. And then they'll know how to build ones in the future themselves. That's awesome. And I think it's very helpful because I've purchased different things online and it's just sort of like a blueprint. There is no interaction with the teacher. There is no, you know, you sort of just send an email and you like hope and pray and wish someone gets back to you. <laughs> so I think that what you're offering is, Fantastic. Um, so thank you for sharing that with us. Um, is there anything else that you want to share that you have going on? Yes. Well, I'll give a, um, so in the partnership here, so like the Sierra so group here would have access to the pre-sale. So I have a, so I think you'll share out the link, but it's uh, bit.ly slash the amateur expert build site. Awesome. So bit.ly the amateur expert build site. And that's how they could find it. And otherwise, yeah, I have a free design course as well. I, I poured a lot into that, and that just covers the basic of fonts, colors, images, and how to like lay them out within programs you would actually use, like uh, PowerPoint, uh, Google Slides. You know, really not mm -hmm. trying to show you this is how you use Illustrator or Photoshop. It's you know the programs you're using. Here's how you would actually apply these designs, and that's completely free, standalone. Like it doesn't like lead into a bigger upsell or anything like I just really wanted to provide some value and hear from folks so I love that they found that but you can find everything with that from my website at justenough.design perfect and so the free course that you have um, mm -hmm. or the free information that you have on your site I'm currently in the process of building a pitch deck um, mm -hmm. so I think that may be something that I could find useful because I was told that mine's a little bland <laughs> So I said, I'd like to, what I recommend you look at is, um, yeah, so first, definitely check it out because, like, it, we go through a uh, presentation specifically about laying out fonts and photos and things like make sure everything's aligned, make sure the photo's, like, crisp and looking great, make sure uh, the, the titles are double the size of the body text so they actually stand out. That's really good basic stuff. Uh -huh. uh, the, only, the other thing I'd suggest for you is if you check out Canva, uh, which yeah. is ent entirely free, like, th they have presentations which I was kind of surprised about, but um, they're stunning. There's some really beautiful um, templates within there. So you can build your, you can build your entire presentation from that and then download it as a PDF when it comes mm -hmm. time to like ship it around and everything. So, uh, awesome. so don't, so don't shy away from Canva for building a full pitch deck. 
Yeah, I, I honestly, I won't, I wouldn't have, I would have never thought to use them for that. So thank you. Um, and so the last question I was going to ask is if you could share a random tidbit of information for me. I don't know if I just drained that out of you with that. Um, but also, so before you answer that, Nat mm -hmm. just responded and said that the course is amazing and she still uses oh, all of the resources. Um, yeah. Nat, yeah, Nat, Nat is absolutely amazing. If you uh, check out her stuff, I am Nat Noise. And her, the podcast episode she just launched or released was stunning. Like it's, it's a must listen for anybody who wants to get into business. It's really great. That's awesome. It's on my, it's on my list to listen to this week. So I can't <laughs> wait. I can't wait to get, uh, to get to it. Thanks for listening, Nat. Um, so Trevor, do mm -hmm. you have another random tidbit of information that you can share? I call myself the amateur expert and claim to know a little bit about a lot. Um, and so the Canva tip was, was really good. So I'm wondering if I can push you a little bit further. Please, yeah. So the um, with online resources, um, it's it's such an amazing time to have to make things look good. Mm. Um, there's just so many, so much free stuff out there. It's absolutely amazing. So some I'll give you um, the uh, so if you look at chroma co, chroma that's dot dot co, and that's k h r o m a dot co. Okay. It is a machine learning website that based on your choices will give you really cool color combinations. Really? So all it's going to do is it's, it's going to invite you in and say, pick colors you like. And you'll be scrolling through and you're like, oh, I kind of like that. I kind of like that. I like this one. Yeah. And based on that, it's going to use it's, the cool thing with color theory, like making the colors that work together. It's just mm -hmm. math. Right. Really? If you think. Yeah, if you think about a color wheel, mm. so if it goes orange, the the way it works is like colors that are across from one another are complementary. Ones that are in a triangle, it's a triptych. So it's not when when a designer comes up with colors that work together, it's they're not doing it necessarily themselves. Like it's just there's a mathematical formula that says this blue will work with this orange. Huh. So sites like this will use um, will use that same thing based on what you like. Right. So, and, and then just say, okay, here's like 50 really cool combinations you can consider. So then you can find, uh, you can maybe find your new brand color or palette for perhaps your presentation. You can find it right there. That is awesome. I had no idea that it was, I thought it was just like a whim. Like, they're, oh, they're so artistic. <laughs> I didn't know that there was science behind it. Oh, yeah. Um, be, yeah everything. So the, you want, you want some more? You've got something else? Absolutely. Oh, I'll take it. Tons. Love them. So the, uh, <laughs> So uh, now these, I think this, these are pretty well known, but it's always, it always bears repeating. So uh, get wave or sorry, um, unsplash for photos. Never heard of it. Oh, it, so stock photos. If you used to be a designer uh, way back when, like stock photos are the bane of your existence. Okay. You went, you, would, you know, how many times have you seen the really awful stock photo of people in a meeting and they're just like, Oh yeah. Like, right. <laughs> now it's like, and you have to pay like six bucks for that. You know, now there, there's so many free photos, like you were drowning in free, amazing photos. So unsplash.com, unsplash.com yeah. is just photo after photo that is completely free to use for oh. a personal and commercial. Anything you want to do with it, completely free. That is pretty cool knowledge. Yeah. Now the, that one tends to be fairly, um, use like so you'll you'll find some of those photos will pop up on a few uh, other sites okay there's a there's this one meeting photo that I've, i must have seen at least like 50 times <laughs> it's a great photo but like the best <laughs> everyone is having the same meeting right yes yeah, slightly different is if you go with burst from uh shopify okay so, so the good folks at shopify they release an entire library of photos as well they tend to be a little bit more unique so if you're not finding what you want on unsplash Go with uh, burst at shopify.com burst.shopify.com that's awesome information yeah i don't i i think i've just used google and went down to like the free option but like you said it's stuff that you've sort of seen on everyone's uh website so it's good to know that there are multiple options um oh. can you see the the what am i saying the comments let's see so we got uh Nat has, has oh, also that's like just... that's way too kind that's and that does not feel, ah, oh, that's amazing. Thanks so much, Nat. Yeah, they, that's really, I think, that uh, that type of thing is really heartening to hear because I think that's really what's on my heart to try to bring to people where 
throughout their career, you would just talk to really incredible, talented, intelligent people. And then it came time to make something kind of look a little prettier. And they would just throw their hands. I can't. No, I, I can't design. And again, like from myself, because I, I taught myself design. Right. It's like, like no, you, you absolutely can. Like, right. It's like, this is just like, you just have to follow some, maybe you're not going to be hired by Nike. Right. <laughs> But the thought that your your slide deck can't look a little bit nicer with a few kind of basic ideas, and especially today with all these tricks and tips, right, right, oh, right, for sure that everybody absolutely can make their stuff look better, be it their website or be it their presentation, everything else. So it's absolutely possible. And so I just want to read the comments so the listeners um, on the podcast will hear. Um, so Nat Noise, who referred me to Trevor. Um, said that um, Trevor has also really allowed me not to feel super intimidated by design and the importance that an impression can make. Uh, and she says, thank you for the great content. No, oh, it's like, yeah, that's uh, incredibly like hard, you know, so, some nights when it gets hard to do work, like, you know, it's hard to push on, but then you hear comments like that and it's like, oh man, I got to keep going. Cause that's, uh, <laughs> that stuff is amazing. So thanks so much, Nat. <laughs> Um, so I want to thank both of you, um, for, <laughs> for this interview, um, and for all the information that you shared. Um, I will put all of the links that you shared today in the, um, show notes and they'll be up on YouTube, Shopify, uh, Shopify, nope, Spotify and, um, Apple podcasts. Um, I look forward to seeing, um, some of, um, some of the listeners, you know, utilizing your tools and seeing, you know, what works they create um, and also seeing what else you have coming in the future. So thank you again for being on the show and I hope to do some work with you in the future. Absolutely. That was an absolute honor. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. And my first international guest, I'm like, I'm going to be so happy about that. (laughs) (laughs) Although in Canada, our cultures are so different. (laughs) I appreciate it. That's that's what Uh, it's all about. Yes, (laughs) all about. Yes. Thank you so much. Have a good night. Bye, guys. (laughs)